you know, sometimes mathematicians invent really annoying ways to help you out. And usually the reason why they invent these really annoying ways to help you out is because the other way that you might want to do it is even worse. All right, so one of these things is going to be this um, method for finding the uh, power of a matrix. So I'm given this matrix here. I made it a nice simple one, 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 zero. And um, I'm going to want to find its cube. All right. Um, like I said, the way that we do this is not a lot of fun. However, uh, if you want to find a to the seventh of a six by six matrix, this is going to be really nasty. Uh, but if you have a nice computer, you can use you can use this method pretty quickly to solve things. All, well, the computer can um, actually do the straight multiplication, but this is going to be easier than a straight uh, multiplication, and it might even be a lot easier if you're trying to do something that has to do with um, constants and things like that. That um, using not just numbers, but you know, real symbols that mean something. Uh, but you know you always start with numbers even though the numbers don't really mean much because uh, you know I think students like numbers right if they didn't like numbers so much they wouldn't object so much when I try to make them do everything symbolically right so to find the matrix, the first thing that we have to the matrix power is first thing we have to do is find the characteristic equation, then get get its eigenvalues, and then do some um, fun things with that characteristic equation. And you know, the larger the matrix, the more of uh, the more of these terms there are in the characteristic equation, and the more things that you have to do by hand, right? So. For this case, we don't have to do anything by hand. If we had the um, three-dimensional one, which I don't want to do basically because of time, um, then we'd have to find a squared by hand. And if we did a four-dimensional uh, four one, if we had a four by four matrix, then we'd have to find a cubed by hand as well. And then we could find additional um, powers. We could find eight to the 75th, just like that. Well, just like this. Uh, you know, which is not a really difficult thing, but it's a little time consuming. And, you know, I don't want to spend any more time on this than I need to. All right, so that characteristic equation we all love is just basically um, taking a minus lambda i and finding its determinant and setting it equal to zero, right? So that's what we do here. We have minus lambda times one minus lambda and we're going to subtract one from that, which is going to be equal to minus lambda squared plus lambda minus one, and that's all equal to zero. Now, I don't know how to do that off the top of my head, but I do know a trick, right, that you all learned um, for finding the eigenvalues, or for, for finding the, um, well, these lambdas are the eigenvalues. Uh, but for finding um, the roots to this equation, uh, which is, you know, that quadratic formula, right? Uh, which is uh, 2x, 2x is equal to uh, minus b, um, so 1 plus or minus the square root of uh, some other stuff which is one, this guy squared, times four times this times that. That's a minus one, that's a one, so that's a plus four. A plus four, I'm anticipating things. Which means that lambda is equal to, uh, let's see, something awesome, right? Like one half plus or minus the square root of five over two, all right? Um, so that's, that seems to be a pretty reasonable thing to work with. Um, now all we have to do is use that technique that they showed you in the um, book, which is finding some constants, all right? 
and how we do this is um, we take our eigenvalue cubed so one of those eigenvalues is going to be um, one half plus the square root of five over two right so that's going to be uh, equal to one eighth and we're, we're going to take that to the cubed because that's what we're looking for a cube that's where the three comes from um, and that's one eighth uh, 1 plus 3 times the square root of 5 plus, uh, let's see, the square root of 5 squared times 3, which is 15 plus the square root of 5 cubed, which is the square root of 5 times the square root of 5, right? And that's all equal to 2 plus the square root of 5, and that's equal to the sum of these constants. Uh, C0 times lambda to the 0 plus C1 times lambda to the first which is one half plus the square root of five over two, right? So that's one of my equations. My other one is going to use the minus sign here instead. So this one eighth bit stays the same. The one stays the same. The, min the plus three fifths turns to minus three fifths. So 15 stays the same. Uh, minus 5 for that guy because this is 1 plus this 1 plus the square root of 5 1 minus the square root of 5 and so on and that just ends up being very nicely 2 minus the square root of 5 so we're not gaining any or losing any really really interesting things so now we have c0 plus c1 times 1 half minus square root of 5 over 2 now this does mean that um, you know, we probably want to subtract these two equations to find C1. Why is that? Because then C0 goes away and half of C1 goes away. We just have this um, square root of 5 bit. So that's, that's kind of useful, right? So we end up with, um, let's see, C1 times the square root of 5, right, is equal to square root of 5 plus the square root of 5, which is 2 square roots of 5, right? Which means, going backwards, C1 is equal to 2. Very easy, right? And if C1 is equal to 2, then we can just, you know, plug that into one of these equations, right, to find the other constant. So that other constant would be, um, let's see, we put C1 is equal to 2 here, and that gives us 1 plus the square root of 5, right? So that square root of 5 cancels with that square root of 5. That 1 cancels only one of those, so C0 is equal to 1, right? Very simple. Nice for us, right? We don't want to do, as, do very much work. It's nice that all of these things just cancel out nicely, right? So now that I've found these constants that are only good for the cube, if I wanted to do something to the fifth, right, or something to the 17th, I'd have to take this to the 17th to find these two constants. So these constants are only for the cube. Now I can go ahead and I can use these constants by putting the matrix back into this characteristic equation. Right, or back into this equation here, right? So how would this work? I'd say a cube, or we'll find a cubed, right? And so a cubed is equal to C0 times A to the 0, which is I, plus uh, a zero, a C1 times A to the 1, which is A. And we know both of these things, right? So we have... Um, C0, 0, 0, C0 is there, and then plus uh, C1, 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 and there's a 0 there because uh, that's, that's what we have is a 0 in there, right? So that's equal to C0 plus C1, 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 and C0, all right? And if we put that all together, we end up with... 1 plus 2 is 3, 2, 2, 1, all right? So that's, that right there, that's our uh, matrix, all right? And we can check that, right? How can we check that? Well, pretty obviously, and this is the reason why I actually use this particular matrix, is uh, I can check that by just doing the matrix multiplication. Right, so I wanted something nice and easy so it wouldn't take all day and I wouldn't get too confused while I was doing it, right? So, 
ignore the first one, go on to the next two. Uh, one times one, one times one, one plus one is two. All right. One times one, one times zero, one. One times one, one times zero, one. And um, one times one, zero times zero, one. All right. That's getting us somewhere. Don't know if it'll get us where we want to go, but it's looking pretty good so far. Okay, so we have one times one and two times one, so one times two and one times one. Um, so that's two plus one is three. And then one times one is two. Uh, one times two is two and zero times one is zero, so we have two. Then we have one times zero, one on one, then we have one there. Oh, and look at that, they are the same thing. We got that. All right, so that's how to do this matrix multiplication. Remember, if you're doing the um, the three by three matrix, uh, you have an additional constant out here, and that's going to be multiplied by the square of lambda, and you'll have to multiply C2 times A squared when you do that one. Just the same thing, only a little bit more um, work, right? And I know by now you're not afraid of work. All right, so... Have fun, and I will see you around. Bye now.